an abandoned cave discovered in London held an astonishing secret about the past of England. Who could have thought that the streets of London, on which thousands of people walk or travel on a daily basis, have been hiding something beneath the surface for centuries? But then one day the secret was out in the open in front of the world. The secret was lost in time. People of London forgot about its existence. There was no way the new generation could have even thought that one day they are going to be witness to this astonishing secret. What was the discovery? Who found it? Where was it hidden? And why was it hidden? We are going to answer them all, just have a little patience, because this discovery is something worth waiting for, believe us. We all know for a fact that Britain is the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. This was the time when some major inventions happened, which also pushed the industrialization to great heights. The economy was booming, factories and industries were set up all around Britain which resulted in mass production of goods and services that made the lives of people easier than before. But it was London which became the epicenter of the Industrial Revolution. You must be thinking, why are we even talking about the Industrial Revolution? There is a reason behind it. The Industrialization Revolution is considered as one of the most important events in the history of Britain. There was so much that changed in Britain back then that we the present generation and the generation after us might not able to guess. The changes we see today are the results of the process that started in the 18th century. But there was one more thing that started back then. Something was being built under the streets of Britain, hidden from the eyes of people only a few knew about it. What was it? You'll find soon. As we already told you, that the impact the Industrial Revolution was putting on the economy was amazing. Be it small or big businesses, all of them were making money. But even then, there was a section of people who were suffering where you can say their life was the cost that came with the revolution. The Industrial Revolution brought a few problems too with it. What problems? The Industrial Revolution also brought the automation lines and machines which took away jobs from the people. They were left unemployed as machines did their job now. For many people who worked as laborers in a factory of years were now struggling to meet the end meat. Though factories and industries were being set up everywhere in London there were very little jobs for the people. There was no way of earning money for the people who suffered the wrath of the Industrial Revolution. But there was one place where these workers started to work. But what was the reason the work was being done under the streets of London? Unknown to the world there was work for laborers all over London. Hiding in plain sight people were working day and night building something. What were they building? What was the work that asked such silence? The workers were at least happy that at least had a job during times when there was a scarcity of jobs in London. This underground job where several workers were working was basically a non-searchable job. There was a very minimum chance of hearing about the job on the streets. For most people, it was a ghost job where you can say it didn't exist at all. But still, there were people working. They were leaving their house in the early morning and coming late at night, tired and with money in hand that was supporting the poor worker's family. There were some rumors about it which were spread in the streets. On the streets of London, rumors were spreading about the possibility of jobs of which only a few knew about. These few people who were assigned to recruit the workers for the job knew the exact location of the working place. The underground working space stayed hidden for many years. Soon, word spread like fire about an unknown workplace that provided the workers one thing they desired the most, work. We don't know who and why the workers who worked in the unknown place were asked to keep the place hidden. They were asked to do their respective job and never speak of it. But secret like this doesn't stay a secret for a very long. Somehow workers were getting the job and non-skilled workers were able to fulfill their basic needs. They say there used to be a big queue for the job, but who hired these workers? With each passing day, the queue was longer than yesterday. Everybody wanted a job even if it was a small work, they wanted to do it. Nobody wanted to sleep empty stomach when there seemed to be work for everybody, obviously on papers. The reality was something else. Standing at the top of the tallest building you could see smoke coming out from factories that made the sky dark. The smoke also blurred the dreams of many workers who were waiting for their time to change. Time was changing, but it didn't change the workers' life even a bit. So what was changing? The change could be seen on the street of London. Somewhere down the streets, there was a place where people worked daily and nobody had any idea where the place was. But it was there somewhere because today, we have proof to prove its existence. 
The day this story was out, nobody believed it at first. It was shocking. There was no way something like this was hidden below the streets of London where people walked daily. As the news about a secret working space spread, there were few who wanted to investigate it. They wanted to see for themselves if rumors were even true. Nobody talked about the place in person to anybody but as they say, walls have ears. The secret was coming out through the walls on which whole of London was surrounded with. From talking to one person to another there were some missing links that started to connect with each other. The puzzle of mysterious working space was big. The pieces of the puzzle were scattered all around London. The only thing which was needed to be done was to gather all the pieces and put them in one place. But that was an easy to thing to do. Some said that they got the job when one of their associates told them about it. So, every time anybody asked about the location of the secret workplace the investigators heard the same answer again. Again, again, and again. Nobody was ready to talk about it. Why is that? The people who worked there were afraid that if the secret came out and opened there might a possibility that they won't get a chance to work there again and might lose their job for good. Losing a job at that time was risky as a gamble. A gamble nobody wanted to play. The team of unknown investigators was trying to figure out the puzzle of the secret place that kept the workers busy and production on. The team decided to leave the investigation, but the thing is that when we want to do something we try to finish it because somewhere in our heart we know that what we are seeking is there somewhere. But where? They found out everything. In 2015, a team of archaeologists was digging around Regent's Park when they stumbled upon a secret cave. Though they have seen many caves before in their whole career, this cave was different. The cave wasn't ancient or a cave built by some prehistoric people, but a well-structured cave that what it was. The team decided to check the cave. It was dark and nobody knew how deep it was. They took their first step inside the cave in the hope of finding something. They also knew that it could all just turn out to be nothing, but that was a part of the job they were in. Not every day you find something, but that day, it was their day. They found something deep inside the cave. The cave was dark. Archaeologists with a torch and some important equipment in hand were walking down an unknown cave about which they no idea. The cave was a never-ending journey. They even thought going back, but after coming this far going back doesn't seem to be the right approach. And then they reached the end where they found the most amazing thing from the past. A time capsule. No, we aren't talking about igloos here, but an actual ice house that was being used in the 18th century. The team who went inside the cave discovered an abandoned ice house. So, what is an ice house? It was the place where ice cubes were stored. Just like us where we freeze the water in a fridge people in the past stored the ice in these little houses known as the ice house. You might think what's so special about these ice houses. The thing is that unlike present times, in the past, ice was considered as a luxury and only rich people were able to afford it. But did you know who built this ice house which was discovered? As surprising as this might sound to you, ice was really an expensive commodity which only a few were able to afford. Unlike today, where we just have to go to the fridge to get some ice and chill our thirst. Back in the past, the ice was really expensive. And the interesting part is that they didn't have the fridge. And that is where ice houses came in. You could say that these ice houses acted as a fridge and there weren't many who had them. Only a few. So, in the year 1619, when King James I ruled Britain, he ordered that the first underground ice house of London should be built. But where? The location that was chosen for the construction was in London's Greenwich Park. As you can see, ice houses look nothing like an igloo. The ice house was built underground for a very valid reason. Back when the first ice house was constructed, there were no problems of climate change. So, people breathed fresh air and there was almost no pollution. So, these ice houses were built underground to keep the internal temperature low. The interesting thing about these ice houses is that the more ice they held, the easier it was to keep the temperature low or to the point where ice didn't melt away and stayed the same for a few days. Amazing, right? Like today, ice doesn't stay solid for over a minute if we keep it out and open. So, more and more ice was stored in the ice houses. It was easier to keep the temperature low if there was more ice in the houses. Londoners were making a good amount of money by bringing ice to the city. They sold it to the elite families because as we already told you not everybody was able to able to afford the ice houses. So, you could say that King James I was the only person in England who had ice houses. During summer, he used to take his guests inside the ice houses and there the guests were served cold drinks. A hot day and a cold drink, perfect combo. King James, I was a great host, ice was in demand. People who weren't in the business of selling ice also started selling them. They brought ice from the place where they could find snow and then they sold it in the market. 
Due to industrialization, more people were getting rich and they wanted to live a royal life and just like King James I who had ice houses in his names these newly rich people wanted to have at least one in their name. So, basically ice houses became a status symbol. If you had one of the ice houses, you were considered rich. Soon, ice houses were everywhere. Though nobody can say for sure how many of them were built but it is believed that around 2,500 still exist all over London. In the 18th century, everyone wanted one ice house. It was said, a gentleman without an ice house would surely have been shown a cold shoulder by his contemporaries. When everyone wanted one ice house as this was the new business idea because of the demand of the ice people started building one on their property. The ice was imported from North America which was then sold in the market. The competition became tough and soon ice's price saw a downfall and everybody was enjoying the luxury. Other than treating the guests the taste of a cold drink that had a chilly effect, the ice was also used to conserve food and meat. Ice was a new way to preserve the stock. The demand was high and only a few had the luxury to build an ice house. So, the price of ice soon skyrocketed. Because of that, everybody wanted one ice house. Who knows how many ice houses are still there? But one thing we know is that this discovery changed everything about the past. Not only ice was in high demand because it became a royal commodity but it was also used for medicinal purposes. You might have guessed by now what are we talking about. The dentists used it as some kind of a local anesthetic while treating their patient. We know what happens when we hold a cube of ice, our fingers become numb, right? We have come a long way, and nobody talks about ice houses anymore. Why should they? We have fridges for one, and nobody got that much time to learn about some ice houses that stored ice. But think about it. With no electricity and technology, people were able to actually use ice the same way we use them today. And that's what makes this discovery interesting. We should never forget our past and past like this is something to be proud of. So, in 2015, archaeologists were digging around the areas of Regent Park when they found the ice house. This ice house was built by none other than John Nash who was also the original architect of the Buckingham Palace. So, finding an ice house built by a great architect was a big thing. When the world thought he only created the Buckingham Palace whereas before that he created an ice house. There was always an understanding that there was an ice house here somewhere. But we weren't sure where. Even after we discovered where the entrance was, we weren't quite sure how big it was or how you got in, said David Sorapir from the Museum of London Archaeology to The Guardian. For first, the archaeologists had no idea that an ice house was there hidden beneath the streets of London. Second, it was built by the same architect who built the Buckingham Palace. The archaeologists were left stunned when they found this house. It was an accident but a sweet accident that took them into the past. The ice house was discovered beneath the region's crescent. It was really huge in size and because it was found under the region's crescent in Marylebone meant that it was an important piece from the history and archaeologists were no fool to let it go just like that. It's the history we are talking about here. As we already told you, the ice house was massive in size which told the archaeologists that this is the world's first commercial ice house that was used back then to store ice in a large amount. Tons of ice blocks were stored here and anybody who was able to afford the ice came here to buy some. The archaeologists measured the size of the ice house which was 24 feet wide and 31 feet deep. Or you could say that it was the biggest ice house in the whole world ever discovered. You can imagine how much ice it was able to contain. Standing inside the cavernous and beautifully constructed ice house at Regent's Crescent, it is fascinating to think that it would once have been filled with tons of blocks of ice that had traveled across the North Sea and along the Regent's Canal to get there, said David Sorapir to the media. No history books will ever tell you about a possible ice house beneath the Regent's Crescent which was built by the same architect who built the Buckingham Palace. It was forgotten and until this day when it was discovered nobody ever talked about it, Every day several people come to visit one of London's popular park and nobody had a clue that beneath the surface there was a massive hole. This is seldom done, the ice house being generally placed in a sequestered spot, on the side of a hill or sloping ground, the base of which is lower than the bottom of the well. The outside being well banked up with earth to keep out all external air and heat, and neatly covered with turf or thatch, said Abraham Rees in the Cyclopedia. This discovery would help the archaeologists and historians learn more about the past of Londoners. The ice houses are an important part of the Industrial Revolution. This amazing discovery for sure would give some more answers about the history of London and its culture. But from where did King James I find out about ice houses? 
The oldest written documents that speak about the ice house could be found in the cuneiform tablet that dates back to 1780 BC according to the tablet. The construction of an ice house began in the northern Mesopotamian town of Turka. It was created by the orders of Zimrilim, the king of Mary. Archaeologists have also found the remains of ice houses in China that dates back to the 7th century BC. There are also a few pieces of evidence that suggest that these ice houses were also in use before 1100 BC. Alexander the Great used these ice houses around 300 BC and some evidence also suggests that Romans used them in the 3rd century ad. New England was filled with opportunities. People were trading in ice and all thanks to a few ice houses that were in constant need of more ice to keep the temperature low and fulfill the demand of the people who wanted to buy the ice. People trading in ice also traded them to the south of the United States and throughout the Caribbean Sea. After the invention of refrigerators, ice houses lost their uniqueness. They were forgotten and people never looked back as now they were able to hold ice or create new ice every day inside their homes. Soon, people started selling the ice in the grocery store. The ice soon became so common that everybody was able to afford it. North America was one place where the majority of ice was bought. It was transported in ships and since there was no refrigerator, 50% of the ice used to melt away during the transportation, hence resulted in more demand of ice to keep the supply up. Because less amount of ice meant that the ice won't last much longer because the ice houses required more ice to keep the temperature low. After the invention of refrigerators, the ice houses lost their purpose of existence. Between 1939 and 1945 old ice houses were used as ice and food stores. The best part was that they were massive and could hold a huge amount of other commodities. Basically, these ice houses acted as storms, but then during WWII, they found a new purpose. Since WWII ice houses were used as garden sheds, fruit stores, and wine cellars, Ice houses became really useful as they saved the cost of electricity. Inside the ice houses, the temperature was naturally low and then stocking up commodities inside in large amount was much convenient than storing things inside a little fridge that required 24-7 electricity which was almost impossible. In America, the President of America, Washington, asked, What was the use of ice houses now? To which Robert Morris replied, the door for entering this ice house faces the north. A trap door is made in the middle of the floor through which the ice is put in and taken out. I find it best to fill with ice, which as it is put in should be broke into small pieces and pounded down with heavy clubs or batons, such as pavers use. If well beat, it will, after a while, consolidate into one solid mass and require to be cut out with a chisel or axe. I tried snow one year and lost it in June. The ice keeps until October or November, and I believe if the hole was larger, so as to hold more, it would keep until Christmas. President John Adams lost the benefit of the ice house when the Washington, D.C. became the new capital of the United States in 1800. In his diary, he wrote, Snow gives the most delicate flavor to creams, but ice is the most powerful concealer, and lasts longest.